to, to hear you, to speak to you. It's really a pleasure. Uh, you are uh, Elana, the singer of uh, the new band uh, Motive Black. So, um, so I have many questions about uh, this new band, uh, about you. First, my first question, I, I see uh, that you, you have uh, the opportunity to play you know, in LA. It was uh, the 4th of uh, February. It was in the Bourbon, Bourbon Room. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so how, how was it? Is it uh, a great show for you? Um, it was it was a fun show. It was a very short set, so I'm looking forward to our next show, which is in March at the Whiskey A Go Go. We'll have a longer set, so we'll really get to get in it more. You know. Do 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 you appreciate uh, to play on stage and to be on the road? Yes, I was so excited that we finally get to get out on stage. I've been dying to do it for a while. Uh, we were all set to do it right before COVID, but we kind of got shut down. Um, and this year is going to be out get, about like getting on stage and playing more shows. Hopefully, we'll book a tour for fall. What, was it the, the first show uh, you did with the band, or do, do you do you have the opportunity to play before? No, it was our first show with this lineup. Oh yeah, so I, I suppose it was uh, very important for you to 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 present the band in uh, in your town now. Yeah, for sure, for sure. It was super exciting. We got a lot of positive feedback um really a great time and i'm super excited for the next one what what, what do you want uh, to uh, to give to the public when you are on stage uh, what what is important to you uh, when you are on, on stage with the public i think it's giving them like a living breathing show like a, a way to connect the songs in a different way a way to watch how i connect to the songs and it will change a bit how each one resonates with them. So I think it's just a raw, giving people a raw, really emotional and open experience. So uh, you have come back, uh, you just arrived uh, on the scene with a, a new album. Uh, I suppose it was the first album of the band, but it's black. Uh, there are a lot of guests also, it's a great album. Uh, how, uh, how do you work on the writing uh, uh, on this album, you, do do you take a long time? Is it uh, uh, do you write a lot of songs, and after you do a selection between the songs, how was it? Um, each song came about in its own kind of unique way. It was a really collaborative experience. Um, there were songs that I really liked, and or songs that Nick really liked that just didn't make the final cut. Um, you kind of get attached to songs, even if they're not the right song for an album just because you've created them, you know? Um, but it was really fun. It was really fun. Sometimes I would come in with a bunch of lyrics or something that I wanted to talk about, or some days Nick would have like a cool riff and we'd kind of build up from there. Or we would be taking a break from another song and it would be sort of like, we'd be joking around and a new song would kind of form based just because we were like having fun and being free, you know? Is it, you, you, you said that uh, this album was... Uh... Uh, a white journey through this uh, journey of anger, mania, deep love, and self-discovery. Is it a, a sort of therapy, this album, for you? Totally. Yeah, the, the album is about like going through an evolution or abrupt change or growing, which isn't always a beautiful experience. It's kind of a wild experience, and I feel like everyone sort of focuses on how, how great it is to evolve. But there are, you know, there's there's rough and dirty parts of that, and it was definitely therapeutic to write about a lot of this stuff, for sure. It was a, uh, 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 this album is a sort of, it's not a concept, but uh, there is a red line uh, on this album, uh, very important, it's about your sister. Uh, is it the main inspiration of the lyrics, uh, what happened to the, your sister uh, on this album? Well, definitely for the song Art of Auburn, um, the title track for the album is 100% influenced by my sister and, and the way I feel about not having her anymore. But I think what happened with my sister kind of incited a very significant change within me, and that's what inspired the album, kind of the, the journey after that happened and what happened. I made a lot of really big life choices and changes and moves and kind of grew out of this really terrible thing. Yes, I suppose it was very, very uh, uh, difficult and uh, hard for you uh, uh, what uh, this kind of uh, what happened to, to your sister and what you live after. Uh, 
uh, uh, about about uh, this band. Um, uh, you, you came from New York at the beginning. You are now in LA. Uh, mm-hmm. How was born finally this, this, um, the, the the idea to create your own band? Uh, you call it uh, Motive Black. Uh, it was it was a uh, important decision to you to leave uh, from uh, New York to LA. Yeah, I, I think well, what happened was is that I came out to LA to do a couple of work tour shows. And while I was here, I got to work with uh, my producer, Nick Rowe. And I just after that kept bothering him so that he would keep working with me. Um, and I realized that I didn't really have anything left in New York at that point. So I decided to start over again in Los Angeles, which I think is sometimes great. I think change is really good for people when you feel sort of stuck. Well, is it, uh, is it difficult when, when uh, you came from New York? Uh, how was the um, adaptation in, uh, in uh, LA when you arrived uh, to, to, to integrate uh, this uh, whole uh, music world in LA with uh, very different from uh, New York? Was it uh, easy? Uh, was it uh, uh, a challenge for you? I think, um, especially because I came to LA before COVID, <clears throat> um, I think it was a pretty welcoming music scene, which was interesting. I think New York is a little more closed off. I I think I got to work with people here that I probably wouldn't have met if I was still living in New York. Um, there's a lot of, at the time, there were a lot of jams going on at Viper Room and stuff going on at the Whiskey. So I really got to meet a lot of really cool uh, musicians and work with them. Pretty early on, I found a community in Los Angeles, which was really important to me and really helped me be able to realize that I could create a whole new project here. So uh, for for this album, you get a great producer. Uh, You work uh, with uh, Nick Rove, who who, uh, work with a lot of many great bands, who write, who work with you on the writing of the songs too. Uh, we do many things. Uh, he plays uh, also with you. Um, he produces a lot of people like Madonna. He works with Madonna. Uh, <laughs> I, 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 how was? Uh, how do you meet her? And finally, how do you, do you decide to 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 work with him? Was it an opportunity? Was it a, a friend of you, or or just a meeting? Or you think about him and you you contact him? Um, so we were connected through a guy named Josh Wilbur, who actually mixed the Motive Black record. Um, and we were working, actually, we met first to work on a song that I had written with my old band in New York. I wanted to kind of see where I could go with it and play with it. And from there, it just blew up into this whole new project where we were like writing songs really quickly. And that's sort of how Motive Black was born. It was easy to work with him in studio. Yeah, it? we um, it, it was like we had a really good uh, we get along really well, and he was very like open and really open to collaboration. Um, it, it was a learning curve because he's so fast, and I I was used to writing in a, in like a slower band environment, but it it was really like I learned a lot, and I think we just worked really well off of each other. How how do you how was your your recording? Your own recording, your your voice, uh, your voice recording. Was it a uh, was it a challenge? What 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 was in uh, in your mind when you begin to sing and to record I, your vocal parts? I, I feel like if I think about my voice too vocally, like the sound of it, I'll trip up. What I think about when I'm about to sing something is the intention that I'm trying to get across. So what is the song about? What am I trying to have people feel when they hear this? And that way, I don't really focus on my um, voice or vocal cords or stress myself out because I'm really just focusing on the idea behind what I'm saying. And it makes your voice more open and free feeling. There are, there are many songs of, of this album, uh, uh, 10 songs. Um, is there a, a song or are there some songs who have really been a, a challenge for you to sing? I mean, uh, uh, you try to 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 uh, perhaps a lot of emotion on the songs on some songs. Uh, I think Auburn was tricky to record just because it's very emotional, and you, like I said, I like to focus on the intention of what I am singing about more than my voice when I record something. Um, this was a little tricky because you can get caught up in the emotion, which 
can overtake you. There's a fine line between like feeling what you're singing and letting the emotion overwhelm you. And you have to be careful of it overwhelming you because then of course it'll it'll limit your vocal abilities. It was uh, you, you, I suppose uh, it's you uh, who write uh, the lyrics, uh, the text of the, of the songs. Uh, <laughs> was it a huge uh, uh, job to, to write the lyrics? Do you take a lot of time to, to write, to concentrate uh, on what, uh, what you want to say in your text? Some of the songs did, and some were just super quick to get out. They like a few of the songs, like. Uh, Nick would write a riff and it would resonate in me and the song, the lyrics would just pour out. Other ones, it was a little more, I had to rework it and figure it out and decide what I wanted to say. So some were easier than others, but they all flowed pretty well getting the lyrics out. Mm -hmm. You, you, uh, so there are many, many, many songs out. Uh, I mean, uh, on video uh, and on a single. Uh, there are four, four songs. Uh, perhaps, uh, uh, how do you, finally, how do you, why do you choose these songs to be, uh, to be out uh, compared to the other? I mean, uh, is it, um, do you think a lot about that before to, to get uh, your single? How do you decide that this song will be, uh, Heard by, by everybody, everybody. I think um, with the singles we've released so far, we wanted it to be a little sampling sort of of what in the future would be on the album. Um, I really wanted to put Auburn out as a single because I thought that was a very important song, but I didn't want to throw it down first because I thought it might get missed. Um, and it was definitely collaborative between me and AFM Records which songs would get released what, when, which is why I really like them as a label. They really give you a lot of creative control over what's going to come out and how you want to present yourself and your album. But I just that's like those that, songs. <laughs> yeah, that's why you, you choose the first track you choose. It was uh, Auburn, the, the title track of the album. Uh, this is for you uh, uh, very important uh, that people discover this, uh, this, uh, this song. Auburn? Auburn, yeah. Uh, my my pronunciation, French pronunciation. <laughs> no, I think, yeah, well, I think the whole, there are all different aspects to the album, but Auburn was just a, a song that I wanted to make sure was a single. I didn't want to put it out first because I didn't know who, if anyone would even listen to any of our songs. So I wanted to like, kind of like ease in with a couple and then then do Auburn and then I'm really excited all the rest are out now because I, I, I wanted I actually wanted to release fake um but I was outvoted <laughs> <laughs> but not yeah. all that now everyone hear them all so it was a uh, I mean there's also uh uh lift me up with uh, yeah. Carla Hervé uh, from Butcher Baby. Uh, I see the video, so, so uh, with the car, everything. Uh, how was your, your co collaboration with uh, Carla? Was it a, a friend of you? How do you work together on this song? My, my, my uh, manager was out to dinner with her and a few other people, and he was talking about how we were looking for a feature on a couple songs, and he played it, and she agreed to do the feature. And it was still pretty like a uh, heavy COVID time. So we sent the song to her, uh, she listened to it and then she recorded her, her parts in Chicago. And then we talked on the phone a bunch to discuss the project. And then I finally met her when she flew out here um, to shoot the video. And she was just lovely, such a cool, cool woman, like super supportive, super talented, really professional. It was, uh, yes, I see the, uh, the video, the clip. Uh, so you are two in the car to, together. Um, how was uh, the captation? Is it something that you you appreciate to be a sort of like a kind of actress? Uh, I know that you did some uh, actress stuff uh, too. Uh, so how was it mm -hmm. for you to, to to? Is it easy finally for you who play in uh, some movie or so? It's a little different because when I used to act and when I did like TV and film stuff. I was being um, somebody else, and this was using my own words. So it's a little different. Um, it takes a little getting used to for sure, but it, it's definitely fun. It's a different experience though, because I'm I'm saying words that I wrote or singing words that I wrote. 
versus when I used to act, I was, you know, playing a part of somebody that someone else created. Uh, the, the last singer is Cage. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, what, 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 uh, what, what is the thematic of this song, the theme? Uh, what do you want to say uh, in this song? Cage is about feeling stuck, uh, being trapped, whether it be in a relationship or in under trapped within circumstances, and finally getting to the point where you're strong enough to break free and take your time and show who you are and, and have your turn to really like live your life the way you want to live it and do the things you want to do. There's also a great song, Broken, very melodic, very uh, catchy, catchy songs. Uh, uh, you work with uh, Marco Coriel, the, the guy of POD. Uh, it was a good experience, this song, to, 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 to have a special guest like you did. Yeah, we actually, on that song, we have Ray Luzier on drums, which was incredible because he's, he's just unmatched. And then Marcos came in uh, for a day and laid down some guitar on the track, and that really added to it. Um, sorry, my dog's growling. Um, he, they're both really cool guys, really supportive. And um, yeah, the, sorry, hold on. Come here. Come here, little one. Sorry, the song's... The cat of the dog. <laughs> But the songs really grew and I think became much stronger with their influence. It was a There is also Fight Alone was a great song too. Uh, that, uh, what do you try to, to, to get in your in your album? There are some really melodic parts, very some tracks were are very uh, I, I don't uh, rock, you know, with a lot of guitars like Lift Me Up. Uh, do, do you try to, to, to show different faces uh, of what you, you, you are finally as an artist? Yeah, I think the songs and how I sing them and how I perform them really have to do with the intention behind them. So you get different aspects of what I do based on what I'm feeling when I'm doing, like performing each song, recording each song. So some of them are heavier, I was angry, or some of them are about loss and longing and softer. And I think, it, it, like I said before, it's really like, I think the mood and intention really dictates the sound that I create. And you have a great drummer, Ray Lezier from Korn. Uh, yes. so, uh, he, 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 it was a, a good experience to get him uh, with you uh, on this album, I suppose. Yeah, it, it was it was really, um, really amazing, actually, to watch him do what he does. Uh, we did about two days at NRG Studios with him. Um, just like an animal on the drums. He he really brought the songs to a new level. He was super kind, super professional, and just a super supportive guy. Um, it, it, his talent's like pretty unmatched. So I, I'm really lucky that we got we got him on the album. So the cover is very, uh, very uh, you are on, on picture on this cover, but I mean, it's very red. Uh, what was the idea behind this cover? With uh, the red, uh, we think about blood or something like that, you know. Uh, what was the idea for you when you, you choose uh, this cover? Well, I think, as I said, the album is about evolving. And in a way, I thought there was like a cleansing aspect to just pouring red all over the image. Um, it was kind of like a ghosty image, sort of a fading image. Um, and I also think that going, as I said before, going through change and evolution is bloody. It's a mess. Like it's, there's ups and downs. Beauty is a nice way to kind of symbolize all of that. We used a lot of moss too in the imagery in the album, which also is like, you know, going from one thing to another, growing into something different, evolving, changing. It was, uh, I see that you did, uh, you record the first EP before. Uh, what was, uh, what are the main differences between this EP and uh, the, the first, your first album? Was it, uh, I mean, uh, musically, uh, how was, uh, uh, was it in the same way or very different? Do you mean, do you mean uh, the first half of this album they was released as an EP or you mean the band before uh, Motive Black? Ah, it was a different band for, for, for the EP? No, I, I'm not sure which thing you're referring to. The, the, the only, there was no full EP for this released. It, I think on Spotify it's listed as an EP, but all the songs are on, the, on this album. It encompasses everything. 
Okay, so how could you describe uh, your your musical e evolution since you begin in New York? Mm, um, I definitely I've been all over the place. Like in New York, I, I was in a metal band when I was younger, and then I, the last band before this was more of a hard rock band. So it's definitely gotten a lot heavier again. Um, I think as a result of the subject matter and just what I like to listen to in general. Um, you know, a, a lot of different bands inspired this album, but it's definitely a, a grittier, heavier album than my last project in New York. Yes, uh, it, it was, uh, when you compare, uh, you compare the two towns, New York and uh, LA, uh, was it very different for you uh, to live in LA, to live uh, and to play, of course, music in LA and New York? Yeah, totally different experiences. Um, I, I'm from New York, so I had been there for a very long time. We played a lot of like bars. We played a lot of the, the Lower East Side. And I was very, my bands and I were um, like, we created all the songs together. And then this project was, is very different. I moved here, I didn't really know anyone. We, I wrote the songs solely with Nick Rowe, all the songs. And um, now I'm putting them out as a band. So it was a different, a kind of different experience, a different way of creating everything. Both, both I really enjoyed, but just very different. How uh, finally, how is born your, your passion for rock music? And uh, how uh, finally uh, do, do you uh, became a singer? Uh, is it something that you have in your head since you are little uh, little girl? Yes. Um, well, I always was interested in music. I did theatrical music, musical theater, and then um, rock and metal and all that stuff. But I got really into singing and songwriting when I was probably around like 11 or 12, my dad had a nightclub and he would have this singer songwriter night. I think it was on Thursdays. And these women, mostly women would come and like just with their guitars and sing and show what they'd been working on. And I was allowed to go because it was, you know, a calm night there. And I really was inspired by that and inspired by all of them. And that really shaped what I wanted to do later in life. I, I wanted to create music and perform my own words. What is the uh, what is the song that you are uh, prouder in this album? The more proud. Is there a song you are more proud of in this album? Yeah, probably the most proud of Auburn for sure. It took a lot for me to write that song um, and be vulnerable, and um, I'm really I'm proud of that one. What, what what do you want to finally? This album is came out uh, is come uh, now. Everybody can uh, get this album uh what, what is uh what is the idea for the future do you have the do you think that you will go on tour do you try to to come in europe we, we would like to see you on stage in france in paris yeah. it was great it, it will be great <laughs> uh we would love so this year is going to be about touring we're trying to figure some stuff out for the fall we would love to go to europe um but yeah, we're just waiting uh, to hear what we can get on and what we can get going. That's the focus right now. We have some shows coming up in Los Angeles so people can catch us out here. But um, yeah, I mean, the most exciting part of this is getting on stage and connecting to people with the music. And so I'm really excited about that aspect and, and what's kind of, like what's going to come in the future. Do we have the opportunity uh, to, 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 uh, to go in, uh, in France, in Paris, uh, just like a... Uh... Uh, people uh, who want to, to visit or you never go in France? Do you have the opportunity to, to, to visit France? Have I ever been to France? Yeah. Oh, once, once when I was much younger, yes. Um, one time, a long time ago, I would love to go again. Hopefully I have the opportunity to play there soon. It was a beautiful, beautiful place. So uh, about, uh, I see that uh, you have some model, Joan Jett, Alanis uh, Morissette, Chris Cornell. Uh, this is your idol. These are your idols that, that uh, uh, inspire you uh, in your way of singing. Um, yeah, I mean, Chris Cornell, I think, is one of the best rock singers of all time. I love Chris Cornell. I also love uh, Joan Jett. I grew up listening to a lot of Alanis Morissette, um, which I think shaped my voice a lot. Um, yeah, but I, I love all like the grungy 90s stuff. I think there's some great, great stuff there. So uh, just to finish, uh, uh, if you meet somebody, perhaps in France, and uh, you have to present your album 
And uh, what will you say about uh, your album, your band, that uh, for you is very important that people uh, understand and uh, discover? Um, I would say that if you want, you know, some heavy music that'll take you on an emotional journey that can like pump you up or, you know, give you quiet moments to really connect, that you'll really like this album, that Auburn is something you should really check out. So thank you very much for, for the interview, really. It, it was uh, really nice to speak to you and to, and uh, it was, uh, for me, it was a great, great album, really. Oh, we love I'm so glad. So, thank you very much. Thank you so much.